to this short session on landing your first job in tech as a mid-career transitioner. Uh, there are three things I'd like to walk you through today, and they usually fall in the category of threats. Um, but, but a series of interviews that I ran recently with some successful career transitioners revealed some um, strategies, some, some tactics really, that they use to not just turn, turn them around these threats, but also to tame them and ultimately to convert them into opportunities that they leveraged in order to land their first job in tech. Now, in our 20 minutes together under the sun, I'd like to share with you these three threats and then the uh, tried and true approaches that the people I spoke with used in order to bypass them and to get their foot in the door. Now, very quickly, my name is Joanna. I'm the founder of TransitionIntoTech.com, a platform designed to uh, help mid-career professionals transition to a tech role, explore a role in tech. I work to serve mostly people in their 30s, 40s, and even beyond, um, who are out of a job or about to lose theirs, uh, either because of technology or more recently because of the pandemic, and or, or who simply just need to uh, need a do-over in their career for whatever reason. Now, since we have very little time and a whole lot to talk about, I suggest we skip the formalities and get started straight away. And I'd like to st get started with this number here. This is the number that represents the percentage of jobs that never get published, that literally do not see the light of day, the hidden job mar market, the, the, the main threat to mid-career transitioners as they attempt to land their first job. These are jobs that are filled through informal um, informal hiring. And what I can almost hear you say, what now? And what this means, informal hiring, means that recruiters sometimes, often, prefer to recruit either via word of mouth, via internal hiring, or unsolicited spontaneous applications. So basically, the word of mouth uh, is when um, recruiters tap into their uh, networks for referrals for their uh, positions for their openings internal hiring is when the company reaches out to current employees trying to get them to bring on board friends and family and they sometimes they don't they don't only encourage them verbally they encourage them financially as well and also by accepting uh, by accepting unsolicited and spontaneous applications for the roles uh that they, before they even publish the roles now i want to take um i want you to take this in and uh really remember these because therein likes uh lies the the opportunity um but i'll come back to that to that in a second for now we'll move on to the second threat which is this the um african tracking system the dreaded african tracking system this is a um, when when employers publish a vacancy chances are that as a mid-career transitioner you you will never even be considered because you you'll have trouble getting through um this this is a piece of software that basically sc scans applications and uh, um, filters out all the ones that it thinks uh, to be irrelevant based on criteria that the employer set out uh, as they were configuring the, the system for a specific position. Now, you have to bear in mind that this elimination is both permanent and automatic, uh, meaning that your application, if it's not optimized to, to be able to, be, uh, to, to, to come up in these searches, um, it'll never reach the uh, desk, or in our case, in these days, the screen of a, of a recruiter. So basically, you really don't stand a chance, as in zero. And this is because it's, it's a story of percentages. When they configure their uh, positions in the applicant tracking system, they give a number of criteria. And if your application does not meet a certain percentage, you know, does not match a certain percentage of those uh of the of that of, the, of those criteria uh basically yours will be uh purged from the system and will never be seen thirdly oops oh yeah uh thirdly uh and i'll only mention this briefly because we are up to here you know hearing about it and thinking about it and you guess i'm talking about covid and i'm so done with it in fact that i didn't even prepare a slide for this 
But it is important to note, however, that um, it, it's worth mentioning because it's already changed the workplace in more ways than one. And we're likely we, we likely haven't even seen the end of that. And what is certain already that is that it's a changed um, recruitment forever because we're seeing these statistics that say a good, a good part of the workforce is really willing to leave their jobs, to, to quit their jobs if they don't get to work remotely, if they're asked to come back to the office full time. And so that what that means down the road is that as we've seen happen with uh, low skilled jobs this far that move from one part of uh, the world to another, which was good news for some and bad news for some others, uh, this is likely to happen to higher skilled uh, positions, including tech roles. And uh, again, bad news for some and good news for others. But the important thing is that in order to be able to, to stay afloat, uh, whichever end of the equation we stand on, we need to stay informed and to be able to adjust at a minute's notice, really. Now, is all of that cool? Uh, we could uh, roll our eyes and go, that's not fair, and you know, throw a rant. I mean, France, so we know about rants here. Uh, but trust me, those won't get us, uh, those won't get you very far. What would get you very far is um, if you could turn this around and think of it as an opportunity to think of these three threats as actual uh, actually your your tickets out of uh, jobs uh, not out of job search but uh, your golden ticket for landing your uh, dream job and that's because the 80% i mean if we think of the uh, hidden jobs when you look at a list of jobs and you don't find your ideal position there that just means that it's not it, it, it's not that it's not there it's just that maybe it's not published so it's there there's a glimmer of hope for you and if we look at the applicant tracking system, um, the expression that you need to remember is that if you cannot get uh, in through the door, try and get in through the window, because with just a few tweaks in your approach, you can game the system more. Since we're at the tech conference, you can hack the system. Now, finally, uh, so with COVID, the, the opportunity really is that um, you no longer need to justify a change. Uh, everybody's lives and careers have been upended, so now you have the perfect opportunity to go for your dream position and to just to just do what you want, really. But more importantly, if you look at if you choose to look at this as opportunity rather than um, threat, um, if you follow the tips that I'll give you in a second, uh, chances are you'll you'll be able to make the most of. Uh, what's out there for you because not everybody's aware of the reality as i've um, highlighted it to you now and of those who are not everybody uh, acts upon it and of those who do not everybody uh, does it well so that means that if if you see what i'm where i'm going um basically you're already ahead of the game so without further ado let's move into the first uh, tip that i've collected from the interviews that i've run um the first one is don't wait until you're ready because you're never you never are and if you are you never know and plus it's not really your job to know if you're ready uh this one comes from psych who transitioned from uh english teacher to web developer in just uh eight months eight months in he saw an ad he liked the company he liked the uh role and he, even though it was a, a, an ad for a senior web developer, he figured, why don't I just write an email and explain my situation, which he did. And uh, fast forward a few days, he got invited to an interview and eventually his, uh, his um, employer, his now employers told him that they just want to meet the person who uh, basically said, I don't do any of the things that you want me to, but please give me the job anyway. Um, they did hire him and he's there three years in and uh, he's still growing and it turns out the, the, the fit was as good as uh, he thought it would be. Uh, by the way, you can find Sykes' story on transitionintotech.com as you can other uh, stories that I have published and I will publish in the coming uh, months and weeks. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I don't mean for you to, I don't mean to say that you should 
uh, start applying as soon as you see hello world printed on your screen for the first time. Um, I, I definitely don't mean for that. What I mean is uh, don't aim for perfection because that will never happen. And if it does, it certainly won't be while you sit at home waiting for it to come. It'll be if you advance, it'll be because you got a job and started to actually use those skills and uh, build on them. Um, in Sykes' case, that meant understanding, you know, having a good, good understanding of HTML and CSS, a decent uh, grasp on JavaScript and uh, JavaScript uh, framework, and uh, some projects on his GitHub. And remember this, transitioning, it's a whole lot more than just uh, the skills. It's um, it's the interacting with the employers that will really shape your path. And um, so apply early, apply a lot, and keep detailed notes on the, on everything that you learn with each experience, because you'll find that they're looking for this uh, specific piece of tech that you weren't aware of and you didn't know it was important on the job market. And so when you go back home, you can start working on it. Or you can find out about the industry, which will put you in a better position when you see your next uh, um, interviewer. And just, you know, uh, bottom line is that it'll just make you more comfortable in the um, interviewee seat so that when you do get to the point where you are there to interview for the position for you, you're ready for it. Um, a word to the wise, however, um, do go in with, at, at first, go in without. Um, expectations, you know, the low expectations, low uh, disappointments thing, because uh, chances are you will not land your first job with your first application. The important thing is to participate and to take a moment to reflect on your experience and then extract the lessons that you can learn in order to have a better second interview and so on. Now, the um, this is where you can find uh, the two stories so far and the, where the other ones will appear down the road. Now, the second thing, um, I'm not going to um, st uh, spend a lot of time here because the internet abounds on advice from much more qualified people than me on how to, uh, how important it is to build stuff and how, you know, how to go about doing it. But what I'd like to say that if you're working to become a web dev, for instance, as soon as you know your basics, put them to use. Small projects, bigger projects. Um, don't get stuck in tutorial limbo because um, however useful tutorials are, it's really, they, they just give you an illusion of progress and of growth and of competence. And the operative word there being illusion, right? Um, they don't even, I mean, the, the, the project that you build, they don't even have to be fancy. They can just, they just need to show that you're learning and you're continuously improving and um, give give recruiters a sense of your uh, mental processes or, or how your mind works because that is what they're after. So whichever way you go, whether you decide to build a project uh, to fix a problem that you observe in the world or if you just go for the oldies but goldies uh, kind of strategy where you recreate existing pro uh, projects like you know maybe a tic-tac-toe or a, a, I don't know body mass index calculator or a currency converter whichever way you go the trick is to start early and start small using the skills that you have already mastered but and this is important uh, allow or even force yourself to think beyond that. Think of uh, features that you can possibly, you could possibly, you could hopefully do tomorrow or next week or next month, next year. So that, because this will guide you, your, your learning, and then you can come back, you, you go out and learn what's needed for that new feature. And then you come back and um, improve your project. And hopefully if you, if you host the, your project, if you, if you uh, have it on GitHub, not only will you implicitly uh, get really good at managing versions and understanding how GitHub works, but it also, um, it also give you uh, really important raw materials to discuss, to, to go over with potential employers during interviews. Another way to put your skills to use in um, real life situations is to volunteer your time. 
uh, to contribute to open source and get in the, involved in hackathons. And I've detailed these in uh, some articles that you're welcome to check out uh, after the session if you have time. Now, the next thing that you need to uh, do, and this is my favorite, uh, my, 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 if there's one thing that I'd like you to take away at the end of this is to document your journey. To properly document um, your journey can bring countless and for the most part unique uh, benefits. This is really helpful because it makes others like recruiters find you more easily and it makes them think that you're competent and likable. And on the other hand, when you encounter the imposter syndrome down the road, which we've heard so much about uh, over these days, it will be so helpful to you to be able to go through your notes and feel yes uh, there is progress and look how far i've come how do you do that well you you like said did he put some time aside and started writing articles reflecting on his journey um he uh, uh actively and publicly uh participated in communities and i couldn't encourage you more to to get involved in uh, relevant communities um you know for beginning coders and so on and um then uh really you you know use a lot of hashtags and just just make sure that whenever people search for um something related to the specific tech you're uh, you're working on uh, for the specific path that you are you want to embark on that your name comes up um right so what else uh again an article that details that further and then the the other thing is to network uh, a lot well maybe uh that's not the most appropriate maybe that or even that <laughs> Uh, either way, the point is not to start attending uh, events uh, galore and uh, give out your business cards like this. It's more about, um, and, and this is an extension on a previous point, attend events that are heavily anchored in the field you're interested in and um, write about the experience both on a professional and on a personal level. Go for small scale events uh, that for the most part, like meetups and developer groups where you get to interact with people for real. And um, uh, my, my favorite illustration of this comes from David, whose story you can also find on the, on, on the site. He, he saw an ad, uh, uh, he, uh, an article, a, a piece of news from uh, in a newspaper saying that a company that he uh, liked had a a, a private event in a hotel so he uh, put on his jeans and his t-shirt and headed on and um, you, you know he was asked why he's there and he said i just care so much about your company and i would like to to know more um turns out that the person who was talking to him was the founder uh, and uh, fast forward a week um he was on the job he had been offered a place uh, on the spot um now, does that mean start crashing events like that? Mm, possibly not, but just uh, find your way and, and make the most of what you are and what, who, what you can do. And then lastly, uh, leverage the whole you. And uh, that me really means um, that while you might not be the youngest or the most skilled candidate, you have a lot of experience. And I would just like to point you to this, to... Um, reading about the company and not stopping there read about the, comp the competitors and about the products and uh, about what sets them apart what their strengths are and try to pick the um employer apart before you see them read about the industry about their vertical and understand the stakes where the, is the industry going and so on are um what's their situation as a you know as regards the future of work is are they going to be okay uh what's what's the story there and finally think about your role how can you bring value to them as a business not just uh, in your little role but how can your life experience your stack of um soft skills how can all of that really um go towards placing you at, giving you a seat at the table um and really mm, we, we see this all the time that companies prefer uh, to bring the soft skills on board because the, the tech you can teach. 
Now, I think we're running out of time. I just wanted to say, join me on my LinkedIn and on the site. And also I have a giveaway for three tickets uh, for a sprint. Sprints are my coaching program that I'd love to share with you. To access that, just um, um, join me and re reply to these questions. Have, hope you had a good time. I look forward to being in touch and talk to you soon. Bye.